Hello everyone, in this video we will be taking a look at Ubuntu Mate version 2004, which is codenamed Focal Fusa. So this is the long-term support release for Ubuntu Mate, which will be supported for three years, although the underlying operating system will be supported for five years. Ubuntu Mate is using the 1.24 desktop, and we have the Linux kernel at version 5.4 which includes a new lockdown feature which makes it harder for root exploits to happen so it's a much more secure kernel than the previous releases and we also have the new wireguard vpn which has been backported from kernel 5.6 so the linux kernel 5.4 is a long-term support release kernel so yes there's a lot of nice long-term support features going for this operating system but what have the mate team done to their own desktop well in the previous release we saw them working on bug fixes and that certainly seems to have paid off, although they've done a bit more bug fixing in this release. But they've also added some new features, which I'll come on to in a moment. And I have to say that Ubuntu Mate does favour new users. And in a way, this would be really good to see as Ubuntu's flagship desktop. Not the GNOME version. Ubuntu Mate is quite something, and I'm not sure how much I'll be able to do it justice in this review, but we'll give it a good go. I'm taking a look at the welcome screen first, which we've got the introduction and features of the operating system. If you want help from other users, you can go via the community, or we can install an IRC client and get access from IRC. There's a basic software center included, which is called Software Boutique, and they state here, if you can't find what you're looking for, install one of the software centers so you can get the complete range of applications. So yes, if you want the full range, you're going to have to get something like Synaptic or even uh, GNOME's software center. So I can apply those changes by providing my sudo password. I see the purpose of Software Boutique in providing new users a short range of applications to choose from out of the open source world of applications, when there is quite a range of applications to choose from. And why should anyone know exactly all of them? This seems a simple enough list. You can scroll through, you can launch some of the applications if they're already installed. It recognizes when they're installed. There is a browser selection tool included, making it easy to change from the default Firefox, so you can choose any of the other popular web browsers there. Although Microsoft Edge is not included, but uh, perhaps I'll go and wash my mouth out for even mentioning that. There is a new feature here in Ubuntu Mate, and this is to do with the theming, because uh, one of the complaints I've heard many times over doing these reviews of Mate is the comments about the green. I'm not really bothered by it myself, but look, it's really easy to change the theme now. There is a one-click installer included to download a variety of different colors, and then the theme is applied straight away, and you'll notice the wallpaper changes. Uh, the buttons will change in a moment. I will have to leave this page and come back to it. We can also choose between light or dark. So it's ambient applied by default, but there is a dark version of ambient. To be honest though, I found this a little bit too dark. I don't know how I managed to get confused at which side the scroll bar was. Normally I enjoy using dark color themes, but this time around though, no, I'm just gonna go back for a lighter theme. So if I go back to welcome screen, yes, you'll still have to put up with a green color there on the Mate logo, but yeah. Re-entering color selection, the buttons have now changed color. You can change to different desktop layouts. This has always been a good party piece of Ubuntu Mate, but it's uh, good to see they've actually made it even better. We've got the logo of the desktop they're actually trying to represent. So yes, Mutiny was the Unity desktop. Redmond is Windows. Cappuccino is Apple. Yeah, I can change here. This is the Mutiny desktop. Yeah, the behavior and layout has changed. And like we've got the global menu now on the Mutiny desktop. And this global menu was really good. It actually worked for both Qt and GTK applications. Yeah, so the menu there is at the top of the screen. Nice. I'm just going to show off there as well. You can, you can easily move the application into the bottom corners of the screen. Anyway, back to the tweak tool. Let's take a look at Cappuccino with the plank launcher at the bottom of the screen. Well, that's not so good, is it? They keep a green background with blue theming. So some more tweaking is needed if you want, say, the blue colour all around or whatever colour you choose from. I'm going to go back to the familiar desktop because that was the default. Let's go back to the terminal because there is one thing I forgot to mention. The snap list. So let's just resize that. So the applications that pre-installed as snaps are the software boutique and the Mate welcome screen. So if your computer is limited on resources and struggles to run snaps, then yeah, that's the two applications you're going to have to avoid. 
Ubuntu Mate actually offer a few different architectures. Note there is no 32-bit architecture for x86 systems that has been dropped with Ubuntu 2004. But you can still run an older long-term support release versions so that was 1804 was still supported for 32-bit systems, but you've only got one more year support left. Anyway, you can also download for a Raspberry Pi, 32-bit or 64-bit, as well as a few variants of these GPD pockets and micro PCs. And apparently Ubuntu Mate is quite popular on the Raspberry Pi. And I can understand why, it is still a lightweight desktop. I know I wasn't really going to mention too much about the memory usage, but uh, yeah, you can see it's uh, not too overly bloated. With the default desktop layout, we have the brisk menu in the top left hand side. Now something to mention about the brisk menu, this came from the Solus project, but I'm not exactly sure what is happening with Solus these days. Is it abandoned? Is it just not really being developed? I'm not really sure on that. I haven't looked at it lately. But anyway, the Mate team have taken over administration of the brisk menu. So that can continue being developed outside of Solus. So yeah, we have the application launcher on the top left hand side. You can type to search for applications and the type to search is quite responsive. It does seem to pick things up quite quickly. Across on the right hand side, we have the system tray with notifications. The notification menu is a new feature for this release. You can discard notifications by certain applications. Although it's not quite as simple as GNOME Desktop, I will actually have to type in the name of an application and hope it picks it up correctly. Yep, yeah, Kaha, I guess that's right. Well, there is a Do Not Disturb mode. Shutdown menu is basic, but uh, <laughs> at least you've got the Suspend and Restart and Shutdown options all included. I don't have to go clicking around too many times. Well, GNOME should really learn some lessons there. Anyway, taking a look at the applications, there is a red shift for reducing the amount of blue light from your monitor in the evenings. It does feature there as a widget when you have enabled red shift. Under graphics, there are a few applications here and you might notice the name of some of these where they originally came from. So the Eye of Mate image viewer, well that used to be the Eye of Gnome image viewer. So this was a fork of the old Gnome 2 or Gnome Classic, but it has been modernized to use GTK3. So yeah, despite the classic look, it is a modern operating system. Internet, we have Firefox web browser for the default. Now, there should be an email client here somewhere. Where is that? Ah, yes, it's under Office with Evolution. So Evolution has replaced Thunderbird. And we have a partial suite of LibreOffice installed by default. Preferences, well, here's a way to get into some of the tweaks I was doing earlier with the welcome screen. So the appearance, get more themes online. We've got even more themes to choose from. <laughs> well, we're spot for choice in that case. Yes, you can install more themes. <laughs> we're not limited to that default set. And Mate Tweak Tool. So I want to look at this. There has been some changes here. Well, besides this is the fact you can set up different panel layouts here. Yep, that's all standard. Enabling the dock, enabling the heads up display. Yep. But going into the windows here, under the window manager, there is a bit of a smaller choice. This is the Marco compositor only. Compiz and Compton have been dropped. And the reasoning for that is so the developers can concentrate on one display manager. It's a saving of resources, but it makes sense because they mentioned one of the reasons they kept it there was because of a screen magnification. A magnification which they have now managed to build in with Magnus. So they've now got a native application to do the job of magnification. So what's the point in having Compiz? There's nothing stopping you from installing Compiz, which I did for a bit of testing, but honestly, it wasn't as good. I didn't like it after installing it. I know I could have configured it to do some really fancy graphics that there were in Compiz, but uh, I'm really starting to wonder if it's a product of its time and the world has just moved on to a more simplistic way. Anyway, there's been some more improvement on the high definition displays with a scaling factor here. So yeah, well, let's just force it for a laugh. Ooh. That's a bit of a mess, isn't it? Um, that's very much zoomed. I'll give it that. Put it back on auto detect. I'm only running a 1080p monitor here, so <laughs> no need for that. I'm not completely blind, so I'll leave it off. or will leave it to auto detect. There's some improvements for gaming, and that also comes from a feature from Feral Interactive called Game Mode. Let's have a look at the README. So game one is the daemon lib combo for Linux that allows games to request a set of optimizations to be temporarily applied to the host OS and or a game process. 
So it's designed primarily as a stopgap solution for problems with Intel and AMD CPU power save or on-demand governors, but now has a host of a range of optimization and configurations. It certainly looks a nice idea to have, and that is already included in Ubuntu Mate. But going back to the appearance, uh, well, let's change the close, minimize, maximize buttons to be on the left-hand side. A very simplistic control, but does the job. And one final thing I forgot to mention while I was talking about tweaks was there is a promise that tearing is now a thing of the past. Let me know what you think of that. Uh, I don't tend to have so much of a problem with that these days. And lastly, let's take a look at the file manager, Kaha. The theming of the icons does look quite nice and that's taken on the changed theme that I've gone for. <laughs> if you wanna change individual folders, you can right click and change the different folder color. Nice and simple to do. That's not what I meant to do. Let's get that side pane back. What I wanted to do is just change the location. So I want to go to say an SSH server. <laughs> Come on, type in the right place. Just demonstrating what it's like to switch to a different server. Just demonstrating what it's like to switch to a different server. I'll tell you what, I want to make this a memorable location. So what I can do is go to bookmarks, add a bookmark. I uh, don't want it called mount folder, that's pointless, isn't it? Uh, mount folder to where? Mount folder to the NAS. Uh, what have I got here? A test.txt file. <laughs> okay, let's put that into documents. Middle click there, open it into a new window, paste it. So I have to say that Kaha File Manager has retained a lot of the features from Nautilus. And it, admittedly, it's not quite as feature rich as Dolphin, but I don't think any other file manager is. Yeah, that's a split view, so that was F3 to do that. <laughs> okay, I made a test document saying hi. I'm sure there must have been a purpose to that at the time. But when did I make this? Um, apparently in November last year, so no wonder I've forgotten. But I'm sure it was very important I did that at the time. If I delete a file, it ends up in the bin, not the trash bin or recycle bin, the bin. Where I can restore or just empty the bin. And yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to cover with Ubuntu Mate. Oh, there's the Alt-Tab feature now. I think that's been changed, although I can't exactly remember what it was like before. Apparently it's a bit different, so just thought I'd mention that. Go back to that default theme, Ambient Mate. So yeah, I still find that a bit dark. A bit dark and a bit difficult to find my way around the system. But anyway, what can I say about Ubuntu Mate? Well, it seems to have run absolutely fine, it seems to be nice and stable. The Mate team have continued to adapt and improve the desktop. Every time I think they must be running out of ideas, and, but that does not seem to be the case. It is good to see the new feature of the one-click theme installer, so those who don't like the Chelsea Cucumber green colour can no longer use that as an excuse of saying the colour green was the only reason of not using Ubuntu Mate. It would be really good to see Ubuntu Mate as a flagship operating system for Ubuntu. I mean, it's great for new users, and I'm sure experienced users could find something here and actually make the operating system as they want. It's got a wider range of devices that Ubuntu Mate can be installed on with the different releases that are offered with Raspberry Pi and the other GDC devices. It's great. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.